Hello and welcome to the Lady Stairs Knits podcast. My name is Sarah and I am going to tell you about all of the things that I've been making and knitting and unraveling over the past two weeks and I'm so excited that you've clicked on this video. I hope you enjoy it. I'll start out by telling you what I'm wearing, which you might have seen as quite an early work in progress in my last video. When I last recorded, I think I was somewhere maybe halfway into the yoke. It's the Cordy Jumper by Kiyomi and Sashiko Bergen, and it's from the book Moon and Turtle, which was published by Pom Pom Quarterly, and I love it. I hope that you can see it properly. Um, I knit it in a completely different gauge required in the pattern. My gauge was much larger, fewer stitches per inch, um, and I used Nutagen for the body color and this contrast color. Um, the black is Holst Super Soft, and the white is Anfield Angora's Mohair combined with the Neighborhood Fiber Co. Loft um, Mohair Silk. And I love this. It's so, so, so good. Um, I hope that you can see the color of the purple properly. It's like a gorgeous plum um, with a lot of different depth layers to it. Um, I think it is the color Infinitive, um, which was from a few months ago from Nujidin. I knit this up on a 5.5 millimeter needle and I made a few modifications here and there, mostly to try and counterbalance how different my gauge was. The main drawback of knitting at a bigger gauge that I didn't foresee is that the yoke is very deep. So I think you'll be able to see my armpits like here. So it's got quite a deep yoke. Um, I did make it longer than I would normally knit a jumper like this and I made the sleeves a bit longer just because I want, I want it to be functional. I want to be able to move my arms around and you know that sort of thing without flashing my whole body when I lift my arms up. Um, so I did a split hem because I think that that adds a little bit of movability to the body and it has helped. It's turned out really well. I haven't blocked it yet because it's a squishy. I think I'll just block it the first time I wash it. Um, but I've been wearing this at nighttime when it's cold and that's about it because it's really hot in Philadelphia right now. Um, I did twisted rib on the end of the sleeves. Um, and on the bottom, I, I don't know if you can see that, but I did a twisted rib. I just did an inside out regular bind off um, for my bind off. And for the neckline, I just cast on long tail cast on using a similar color of, I think I used whole super soft to stabilize the nudidin to stop it from stretching out. And once I finished everything else, I went back and added on this collar. I suspect it will stretch out a little bit over the, over the course of wearing, um, but that's okay. Um, I love this. I really love the color. It was a joy to work on. Um, I wish it was a little bit less deep in the yoke, but this is the only jumper I have that's deep in the yoke, so I think that I can work around some of the impracticalities of it since it's the only one that I have. And I'm just really enjoying wearing it. I love the color combination. I think that the contrast color, which is sort of a mauve, is tall bark. I, I received it in March. So that's what the color that I think that is. It worked up really quickly. It was really fun to work with the Nutaden. And I think that's all I have to say about it. I would definitely recommend the pattern. Oh, I did make one other modification, um, which was to do with the shaping, short row slash gusset shaping in the back. The pattern requires just a, a back panel gusset. Um, once you split for the sleeves, you just knit longer in the back. And when I did that, it created armholes that were so large, it would have been completely unwearable for me. I think it would work fine if you were knitting at the recommended gauge, but 
the combination of the wider stitches and then back gusset. The sleeves were proportionally way too large for the jumper and there was no way I would have been able to decrease down. So I pulled out the gusset and I just did some regular um, short row shaping in the back. Maybe I'll turn around if you can see, show you. I did it just under the yoke. Um, and I think it looks good. I really love it. I'm excited for when it gets a bit colder so I can wear it more. And um, I think this is the sort of garment that will wear in really beautifully. And I couldn't have chosen colors that I like more. It just turned out so well. So, big thumbs up to the book um, Moon and Turtle by Kiyomi and Sashiko Virgin. Um, there's a lot of patterns in there that look really great. I'm actually going to talk about another one later in this episode. It was a joy to knit and I would definitely recommend it. There's also a knit along happening right now, um, which is hosted by Tid Knits on Instagram. And I entered the knit along. And um, yeah, so if you're interested in entering the knit along, you should go ahead and do that. I think you have to knit a pattern from the Moon and Turtle book but whips are allowed, um, and there are prizes available too, so I would get on that if you're planning on making something from that book. And that is my jumper. I'm gonna take it off now because it's really hot in Philadelphia, um, and I actually have another knit underneath. I guess I'll tell you about what I'm wearing now um, before I tell you about my works in progress. Now I'll tell you about what I'm wearing, what I was wearing this whole time under the cordy pullover, um, which I'm not sure if I've worn in an episode before, but it's the Ranunculus pattern by Midori Hirose, and I knit it in a Quince & Co cotton yarn. I'm not sure which one it was. It's a DK or sport weight yarn, um, and I think the color is almond, but I'm not totally sure. I made this just over a year ago. Um, I really enjoyed knitting the ranunculus, and I do quite like the finished object, but the yarn is extremely delicate. For example, there's a visible to me line of pilling from where my crossbody bag that I wear normally lays. Um, and it's also this sort of yarn where when I take it off, I have um, like nobbles of it in my armpits. So it's just a very delicate yarn, but it is extremely soft and it was nice to work with in a way that often I find cotton yarns to not be nice to work with. So. I do love the way this looks. I did, um, again, I guess, twisted rib at the bottom. I used every scrap of, I ch it was either two or three skeins I had of this. I'll put it on the screen. Um, and I also changed the gauge. I used smaller needles. And it doesn't have too much positive ease on me. It's quite, um, close fitting, but I really like it. I think that it looks really nice. It's a color that I don't wear a lot, but I enjoy. Um, and it's good for the summer days. So that's my ranunculus. Now I'll tell you about my other works in progress. I have two and a bit. First, I'll tell you about this sock. This is the second sock of a pair. And for the past couple days, this sock has been my TV knitting, on the go knitting, um, that sort of thing. It's just plain rib, two by two ribbed. I'm using Robin by West Yorkshire Spinners with a self striping yarn, which I think is a 75-25 wool and nylon blend, or maybe it's polyamide. And I think like a certain percentage of the wool is BFL. Um, so yeah, it's a um, peasant heel 
this is only the second pair of socks that I've made that have a peasant heel. I, ha I don't find that they... I just don't find that it um, fits me as well, but I think that I need to make the heels deeper for when I'm making socks for myself, um, if I want it to have a better fit. I just, uh, I, when I knit the first one of these, I didn't want to mess up the stripe repeat. Normally I don't mind, but I thought that the shirt repeat already looked a bit weird. It definitely looks better on the pair of socks I've made with this that don't, that aren't ribbed. Um, so I've passed the point with where I will insert the heel that's here, and I have two more color repeats, and then the toe. And I'm hoping to finish this before I move, because then I won't have to take this as a whip and I can bring a different project like this on the plane. Um, but I'll show you, here's the finished one. So I used a slip knot cast on, which I love that cast on, regular wedge heel, regular wedge toe, and you can see that there are four color repeats in this sock and I have just started the third color repeat for the second sock. One or two episodes ago, I had four single socks, the first of the pair, and I've been whittling that down. Now, uh, after this one, I will only have one. So I feel that that's quite an achievement. And I also made another pair of socks with this yarn for my gran. So once these are done and I see her next, we'll have matching handmade socks. I originally started these socks for her, but then when I saw her, she told me that she had quite swollen legs, so I thought it would be better to make her a pair that wasn't as tight, um, which I've already done. So I'll keep these ones, and it'll be really fun to match her. I love matching people. My other work in progress you saw last episode, um, and when it was just a tiny cast on. and. It is a bit more than that now. It's the ripped bottom to the roosty vest, vest, tank top, whatever you want to say. Um, it's a pattern by Ella Gordon, and I have been in love with it ever since I first saw it, probably, I don't know, six, eight months ago. So it's been quite a while. Um, in March or February, my partner and I drove to a town in New Jersey to go to a wool shop because I saw that they had the um, Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift line and I, I really liked the way that the pattern looked but I don't tend to use the same colors in a pattern almost ever so I wanted to pick out my own colorways and we spent maybe what was too long for him um, in the yarn shop figuring out what colors I wanted to use and um, and then I got home, I was very excited about it, I made a swatch, which I've shown many times on this channel, but I'll show it to you again. This was the swatch. I didn't really like how dark this orange contrast color was, so I went and I got a, a lighter peach, because I wanted an orange, but I wanted it to match the tone of this light blue. And and I bought a few peaches, but none of them were quite right. And it turned out that the right peach had been in my collection the whole time. So I made another swatch with that. And this is that swatch. I'm giving you the quick rundown. If you'd like the more extended version, I talked about it more in my last episode. Um, I used Photoshop to tile both of these. You might see there's two options for this one. One of them switches the darker contrast color for the medium, and one of them keeps the darker and emits the medium. And then I had also, also you can just look at it as having one extra contrast color. So I used Photoshop and I tiled these designs to see what it would look like on the vest as opposed to just one repetition of the motif. Um, and I've been polling people, I've been asking, I posted it on my podcast and got some feedback about that. Um, and I think at the end of the day, I just really liked the mix. I liked having all of the colors. Um, I 
I don't think that the light orange shows up as well in the little areas, like in this part. You can't really see that it's a wiggle in the same way that you can with the dark contrast color. So I used all of the feedback I got and I spent a lot of time thinking about it, deciding what I wanted to do. Um, and when I come to when I had come to a decision, I cast on the ribbing and I made a huge mistake. In my last episode, I said that it doesn't really matter how much positive ease it has because no matter what, I'll be happy. I was wrong and I was so stupid. I had made the swatch. It would have taken me less than 10 seconds to measure it. Um, my gauge is wildly different from the pattern. It's much bigger. And I'm not a loose knitter in particular. Um, so I think that, well, there's some real sirens going on outside. My gauge was so off that I was, I was, what I was knitting with this stitch count because I didn't measure my gauge before I cast on and knit this ribbing. Um, it would have been a design with it that was 70 inches, um, and there's no shaping in it. So 70 inches wide, which is not the right size for me. I have a 40 inch bust, um, and I think that that would have been way too much positive ease for this feral vest. So, I was making a size four, which was supposed to give me about 10 inches of positive ease. I had spent hours and hours and hours on this. The cast on took days. The ribbing took a really long time. The only three millimeter needle that I had um, was one of those Addy, not the sharp one. It was like an Addy needle and it was so blunt and I was doing twisted rib and it was just such a nightmare. It took me over 30 minutes to knit every row and there are 14 rows of ribbing in this. Eventually I was so fed up I went to the local knitting store which is Loop in Philadelphia for me and I got a different three millimeter needle. It's like a Knit Picks sharper wooden needle um, which cut down my time to about between 15 and 20 minutes a row but by that time I only had two or three rows left. Um, I also by the way, I really enjoy timing how long it takes me to do a row in each iteration of what I'm doing. I don't know why, I just really enjoy having that information. Um, so I got, when I realized that this was not going to fit me, I was really upset. I used almost a whole ball of wool on it and I can't get rid of this. I can't unravel this. So much work went into it and it's, beautiful. It's it's just some really like nice knitting. So I put it on this um, cord and I have a plan for it, but I'll tell you about that at the end. Um, basically that night after I realized and I was really upset, um, I just cast on again, cast on the size two Size one would have given me one inch of positive ease, which isn't really enough. And so I went with the second size. Um, and I whizzed through the ribbing. There are a hundred fewer stitches on my needles, which made a really, really big difference. And I was working with the sharper needles from the get-go. Um, and yeah, I've made a lot of progress on it. I'm like really excited to show you. So here, is my roosty pullover so far. I hope that you can see it. You can see the ribbing at the bottom. Oh, it's quite hard to show. And then you can see that I am alternating which contrast color I use for the smaller motifs. You might not be able to see. I'm also alternating which contrast color I use for the flash in the middle of the design. Um, and I've made a lot of progress on it. Knitting this is so much fun. It's extremely cool to 
spend months thinking about the colors. And then may I made this photoshopped tiled thing and it was so cool. It's so cool to knit this up and watch it start to look exactly like the photoshopped image that I made. It's thrilling. Um, and I've just been excited about making this for so long and I feel like it's going pretty quickly. I mean, I am spending a lot of time on this. This is like, this was not a one afternoon endeavor, but in the past two weeks, I've knit almost this whole jumper and like over half of the body of this tank top. And I haven't, I'm not a very fast knitter. So I'm just really enjoying this project. The colorways are turning out exactly as I had hoped. Um, it's working up quite quickly. Um, it's, a, it's so funny. When I knit something in plain stockinette, I get really bored and antsy. But then when I knit color work, I really look forward to the plain rows. And it makes me, it's like the same thing as when you're eating an ice cream that has chunks of cookie dough or like brownie in it and you dig to get those chunks. It's like you wouldn't enjoy just eating cookie dough as much as you enjoy eating those little chunks out of the ice cream. And that's how I feel, because there's a couple plain rows in this. Um, I've got about two more rows until I finish the first um, motif. Here, you can see how it looks next to the swatch. <laughs> this is going to be cropped um, and steaked. The color work is steaked. I have done a steak before, but I don't think I've ever done one in a pattern. So this will be my first directed steak. Um, I might need to get more of the dark green wool. I did buy an extra ball of it last time. Um, and and I, I'm making a much smaller size than I thought when I was buying the yarn, but my gauge is a lot bigger. So it'll probably be somewhere in between the amount that I thought and the amount for this size in the pattern. Um, but I'm just loving it. I hope you can see it. I mean, I'm knitting it on three and a half millimeter needles, which is the size recommended in the pattern. And I'm just using these fixed Chiugo circulars. So this will have about 10 inches of positive ease and there's no shaping. So it will have a lot of positive ease at my waist, which is why I want it to be a bit cropped because it's 10 inches in the chest. Um, I'm planning on wearing this over t-shirts, over, I have this one white shirt with like really big bishop sleeves, which I'm excited to wear under this. Um, I think it will be great while I'm in Scotland and it's a bit colder, just to keep warm as a quite light layering piece, like light in my backpack and I'm so amped to not have to knit sleeves. That's amazing. It's going to be like, once I finish the body, it's kind of close to being done. In the pattern, there are four pattern repeats. Like just by looking at it, I can see that they repeat the chart four times. Um, and I think that I will probably need to knit fewer rows. I need to account for my um, gauge in the length because two of this, if I knit a whole another of these repeats, it's going to be quite a long vest. Probably it would be like 15 inches from the underarm, which for me would hit sort of low hip, I think, um, which isn't what I want because I want this to be kind of cropped. So if you think about it, not even accounting for how long the ribbing took and um, decreasing for the armholes. I'm like definitely over a third of the way done with this. And I think that that's pretty neat because I've been wanting to make this for so long and really anticipating having the finished object. Um, I'm going to the Perth Festival of Yarn not this weekend, but the weekend after. I can't believe it's so soon. On the Sunday, and maybe I'll have this finished to wear it. I would love that. I can't believe I'm moving so soon. It's, we're leaving next week in the middle of the week. 
um, and it kind of feels surreal. Yeah, I, just, I think it'll sink in when I'm there. So what am I going to do with the ribbing that I made that is for a jumper that would be much larger than I would probably want to wear? Well, where did I put the ribbon? Here it is. Well, as I was going through the Moon and Turtle book, there are so many amazing patterns. I love the cardigan with the sort of varsity stripe. I really like the hat with the little stem. Um, I like the shawl as well. There's just a lot of really great patterns in there. I'm so glad that I have that book now. Um, but one other pattern really stood out to me. And that pattern is the Kinsen pullover. It's a raglan with some really graphic striped designs. There's a lot of different options in the book and they show swatches of lots of different ones and um, different versions being worn by models. and. I just love it. I'm really inspired by all of the colors and the way that they're combined and um, I've been really wanting to knit something in this sort of wool at such a fine gauge since I, since I made the magic toadstool socks about two and a half years ago. I knit those on 2.25 millimeter needles out of whole super soft and the fabric is just gorgeous. Just, just like the most stunning fabric that I had always thought, well, I'm never gonna knit a jumper, a fingering weight jumper on this small needle. So unless I learn how to use a knitting machine, that's probably just going to be a dream that I have. But now I've made the ribbing and I did this on a size three millimeter needle, so pretty close. This is the same thickness as those socks. So I'm extremely tempted to start a long-term project um, where I'm aiming for that type of fabric. I, I think this will be large on me, like very oversized no matter what I do at this point, but I think that if it's not color work, if I don't go up in needle size for the body, um, and if I don't do the increases after the ribbing that are in the roosty tank, it will probably be wearable. I also think that I am not going to do a raglan shaping like in the design. So I think that I am going to knit a drop shoulder, which I think will be my first drop shoulder knit, um, using stripes inspired from that pattern um, and sort of a sporty rugby stripe look um, and maybe follow loosely some of the stitch counts from the boxy pullover, which I know is a fingering weight pullover with a ton of positive ease. Um, but I want to do my own thing for the neckline because I really like how the neckline dips into the stripes in the Kinsan pattern and I want full length sleeves and I don't think I want them to be close knit like in the boxy. So I'll follow the boxy pullover for guidance, but sort of branch out and do my own thing and follow the neckline recommendations for shaping from the Kinsan pullover. So it's gonna be a little bit of a Frankenstein. I'll show you the colors that I'm thinking. I laid out all of my fingering weight non-superwash wool on the floor. And I was just making all of these combinations. It was so exciting. I took a picture, which I will put on screen. Um, and even before I laid all of those out, I knew pretty much what I wanted to do. Um, so I am want, wanting to make a pullover with these three colors. This is Candy from Biche Bouche, and it's from a distance it looks like a bluey gray. Up close you can see that there are a lot of different colors in there. Um, and this I think is I think that this is damask, but I'm not sure because I haven't got the label still on this. It's from Whole Super Soft. It's also 
like a dyed in the wool, very interesting color um, with sort of blues and oranges in it. It's actually what I used to stabilize the neckline of the cordy pullover and it blended so well with that that it is invisible. So I think that these colors look really good together. It looks kind of like a rug, like a rugby color combo and I'm very excited about this. It's going to be a lot of plain stockinette but I think just it'll be a long-term project. Um, I've been hesitant to knit a drop shoulder jumper because I don't think that they really suit my style or my sort of shape. In my experience, I just find that the drop shoulder tops tend to m make me look quite bulky. I guess I'll say that whenever I wear drop shoulder tops, unless they're really drapey and with, have a lot of like relaxed fabric elements, I just don't really like the way that they look on me compared to other constructions, which I really like the way that they look on me. But I really want to try making one because I haven't. So I think that the sort of drapey, fine fabric that this will produce will be beautiful. The colors are great. I'll probably need to get more of this pine, but I'll just do that when I run out. Um, pr the priority goes to the cordy pullover so that those can all be from the same dye lot. And then with the stripes, it's sort of easier to disguise different dye lots if that is a problem. I'll probably need to get more of the purple, but again, I'll just do that when I run out. Um, and I have about 500 meters of this color. So I think that I'll actually be fine for this color. So that is what I've been knitting on for the past two weeks. It's been very invigorating. Um, I feel very inspired by the colors and all of the different textures and playing with gauge so much um, in my knitting sometimes on purpose, like in the cordy, and sometimes not on purpose, like in the roosty. Um, but sometimes I feel a bit upset that I feel like I want to knit so many things and I have so little time, it takes so long to do it. But I also think that it's just a really cool, good thing to feel so easily inspired and motivated. And I really love looking at all of the colors that I've collected and comparing them with each other and try to find a combination that's going to work really well. Um, so it's been a really fun two weeks with the knitting. Everything else has been sort of stressful because of the move, but my knitting has definitely been a very calming and fun, joy-filled exercise. And I really hope that you've enjoyed listening to me talk about it. If you have any comments or things that you want to say, please type them out below and I will reply to all of them. And thank you if you're a new subscriber. I'm so glad that you have clicked on the video and you're coming along to see what I've been making. Maybe I'll get some footage of the yarn festival that I'm going to. It'll be the first one. And my friends who have Anfield Angora um, we'll be there. So I'm maybe going to bring my cardigan and I can show them the cardigan that I didn't get to show to them uh, at their wedding when I had COVID. So I'm really excited to show them that. I'm just, I think that it will be really good. And I'm really excited to move. The next time I talk to you, I will be in my new flat or maybe at my parents' house and I will have started a master's degree. Um, and my life will be pretty different and I've spent a lot of time setting this up so I can't wait and it might be three weeks until I next film an episode it depends on what life is like when I get there so I really hope you've enjoyed watching this and goodbye <laughs>